So hello, beautiful tribe, and welcome to magic month of December. I can't believe it is December 2021. Um, I will be really grateful to those of you listening live, if you can use the chat box to let me know that you can hear and that the technology is working correctly um, and that you can see and that everything's flowing so please use the chat box and also I love my webinars to be co-creative so please 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 bring your own wisdom your own guidance your questions your energy uh, all of your conversation to this webinar if you are listening live and hello lovely to see people I know and people I don't know um i bet alabama is warmer than it is <laughs> in the uk and so hello welcome to magic month of december if you haven't met me before my name is karila and i am from the starlight temple and the starlight is a company that does all sorts of courses and ceremonies and travel adventure that is about using channeled and spiritual tools to become uh, more empowered to live more of our love, live more of our truth, live more of our um, light. And Magic Month is a show that I've been running for years. It is an energy forecast. So it gives you an astrological forecast, an energy forecast, an ascension forecast for the month ahead so that you can use that information to align to become more empowered to become uh, more of yourself more of your light more of your truth and I have to say I I am so grateful <laughs> to magic month because it really does knowing the forecast especially knowing the astrology it really does allow you to make sense of the month and suddenly you're like realizing why things are happening and why you're going through certain processes and it's just when you understand it it's so much easier and of course then you can use like I said the information to to know when the best time to heal is the best time to manifest to understand the process that you are going through and so December is an amazing month. I mean, how could it not be? Because 20, 2021 has just been amazing <laughs> in so many ways. It's been so hard and so amazing. And so obviously it is going to end with a bang. Um, it's a very, very dynamic month. It's a month that when I tune into it, it's all like about activation and the higher self and higher perspective and magic um it's kind of like 2021 saved the best till last <laughs> in a way um i was reading a brilliant report about astro astrology report about the month of december and i loved it so much that i've got a quote astro butterfly on this one because they literally said in december it is hallelujah it is three hallelujahs there are three things astrologically happening that literally are hallelujahs and so it's an amazing month december um obviously anything that's amazing is also challenging um but surely by now we are used to the blessings and the burdens we are used to the challenges and meeting meeting the the challenges in a way it feels like a month that is going to shake things up, but also bring things to climax, fix things, realign things. It's, it's a very, very, very positive month, especially if you catch the waves, if you ride the waves, if you know the forecast, if you use the three hallelujahs and everything else that is happening uh, this month. So I'm really excited to share this forecast. Let's begin with a meditation and so when you're ready, sorry there's a kind of sound isn't there from the, can you hear that sound? It feels like my computer's overheating. 
maybe that's what's going to happen in December. We're going to overheat. <laughs> so when you're ready, closing your eyes and feeling the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Breathing in love and breathing out gratitude. I'm going to turn the camera off just because of the noise. Breathing in love and breathing out gratitude. Using your breath. come into the present using your breath to surrender through the noise if you can hear it like I can using your breath to bring you into presence to bring you into surrender maybe placing your hands on your heart and bringing you your awareness into your heart and as you do this feel this column of light from the center of the universe Bring down into your energy field. Instantly and consistently raising your vibration. And as this light travels down through you into the heart of Mother Gaia, Feel it bouncing off the heart of Mother Gaia and travelling back up through you into the heart of the source. Feel yourself held in this two-way flow of love and light. And as you are held in this two-way flow of love and light, Invite yourself to surrender. Invite yourself to surrender into a two-way run. As you feel your aura stretching because you are surrendering to love, because you are surrendering to light. And in your aura, the dance of your energy expanding in all directions. And as you expand in all directions, feel your aura being sealed from top to bottom in white and golden light so that only love and light can enter into your energy. And a foot away from the edge of your aura, Feel the rainbow fire activating and dancing around your aura so that any energy released from any direction can be instantly transmuted into love and light and sent wherever it is in the highest good for it to grow.
and now opening your heart to Mother Earth, feeling a grounding cord of energy from your belly, going down through all the different layers of the earth, down into the iron core, crystal in the center of the earth. Feeling the iron in your blood vibrating with the iron at the heart of the Great Mother. And as you connect heart to heart with Mother Earth, feel yourself being brought into divine alignment. Feel yourself. Coming into perfect alignment, coming into being more present, more breath, more love, more life. And as you come into this divine alignment, experience your white blood cells illuminating with source life. And as your white blood cells illuminate with source light, notice the vibration of your body changing. Notice that your vitality increases. Notice. There is a sense of freshness inside of you. I really relish in this feeling of mag magnetic alignment, this feeling of being alive and being present. This particular part of the daily practice that some of you know so well, Laura Anwar's beautiful daily practice, this part of connecting down into the heart of Gaia, into the vibration of I am of the Great Mother. And connecting to Receiving source light, receiving higher self light into your blood, into your white blood cells, this feeling of becoming fresh, of becoming full of vitality. It's really, really key in December. So as you choose to feel it now, notice that all of the colors in your aura become brighter. Notice that your heart is not just open, it is more vibrant, it is stronger. Notice that you are not just holding a high vibration, you are living a high vibration. This is what my guides are saying is really important for December is to really, really begin to live it. And as you choose to live it, experience your chakric system opening now so that light flows into your center. And as your chakras spin, feel your energetic strands of DNA reconnecting you to who you truly are right here, right now. And as this reconnection happens, feel the female, the male, the stillness and the unity parts of your heart melting together, bringing you into the experience of the one heart. And as you come into the experience of the one Feel unconditional love 
flowing upon the rhythm of your own heartbeat which is the rhythm of the universe flowing to flowing through flowing from and flowing around you now and in this overflow of love notice how you feel how you have arrived And open your heart to this cracker of a December. <laughs> and as you open your heart to this cracker of a December, open your eyes and come into the room. I might take the webcam off. I don't know if that's going to cause the webinar to cut out, but I'm a bit worried that my computer is overheating. So let me just take the webcam off and see. Sorry about this technical. Hi. So, is that, yeah, we have, you can hear and see now. I'm sorry about the technical things. Um, but yeah, it was just getting very, very noisy, so I was a bit, a bit worried. Um, full start, I'm sorry, guys. So, anyway, the, I hope you enjoyed the meditation. Hopefully, you are back in the room. Let me know that you can hear. Let me know that you can see. Let me know that... Um, oh, the sound's coming back. Okay, we're just going to have to uh, trust it because taking the camera out didn't work. Um, it's funny, as my guys were talking about that... <laughs> In that meditation, my guys were talking to me and they were like, yeah, the battery is, of the old system is going to overheat in December. So I don't know what that means, but I feel like this is a metaphor for what we're about to <laughs> experience in December. Um, December's really exciting. Let's, let's just go straight into the forecast because it's so exciting. So on December 4th, which is tomorrow, we have the end of the eclipse window and I know some of you were saying that the um, you're doing so much shadow work at the moment and shadow work for those of you that don't know is deep subconscious healing um, and it's a really important part of everybody's path right now to, 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 to heal their subconscious and the best time to do it is eclipse windows and so eclipse windows really are the time for that deep trauma release, healing, uh, transformation work. And uh, I've been doing it. Uh, we've been running a course at Starlight called Embracing Care. And, and honestly, the only way I can describe it, and I'd love to know if, if you guys have felt this, is I'm like 
my core wounds, my wounds that are like at the bottom of most of my other wounds, my core wounds have just really been hit hard this eclipse window. And it's a good thing because, you know, when wounds surface in an eclipse window, we're, we're in a process of releasing them. We're in a process of, of purging them. Um, but I just love to hear if any of you had the same thing of like this, this eclipse felt like it really hit the core wounds, the original wounds, the, the, the depth of the wounds. And it's, a, that's a good thing. Like I said, it's like the eclipse window is giving us the clearing out for all of this activation that is December. And so really tomorrow is the last big day for that healing. It's the last big day for that purging of the core wounds, <laughs> uh, purging of the core wounds. And it was always going to be a potent eclipse window. Um, you know, this eclipse, the, this is the solar eclipse, and it's connected to the energy of the snake. And the snake is amazing, but it's all about shedding the skin, you know. It's all about, particularly the the deep, the snake has a real connection to the deep feminine. And again, without it being my intention, my wound journey, this eclipse window, has been all about those witch wounds, those feminine wounds, those deep uh, feminine wounds. And so... Um, the 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 fact that the solar eclipse the end of the window is connected to the the serpent is connected to that deep feminine cyclical energy the shedding of the skin um is really important and what i've understood about this eclipse window is it's it's the reason it's going into the core wounds is because it is about changing the record you know the deep record of that wound that's what we've been purging for this time that's what we've been purging for, is to change that that record that that is, you know, so deep within us. It's manifesting Pisces. <laughs> it's manifesting the old world. Um, and it's interesting because this solar eclipse, you know, it, 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 it's a it, it's a new moon, so it's about new beginnings. But it's also connected to the south node. It's a south node eclipse. So it's also about releasing the past. And, and you know, the south node is about, like, our gifts. And that's the other thing that's come up in the eclipse window for me. It's, it's been all about magic. Like, it's been, like, the witch wounds and about releasing the patterns around that hold us back from our magic. And... Um, you know, it's very much what, what I understand astrologically about tomorrow is it's like, okay, you close the door on the past, on the karma, on the pattern, on the, on on that core wound so that another door can open, so that a new reality can can open. It's huge tomorrow. It's 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 the last new moon of of twenty twenty one. It's such an important moment where we can kind of call upon the forces of nature and be like okay I've seen the wound I own the wound <laughs> please I shut the door on the wound now I, I transcend the wound now and if you don't know what wound to work on then my suggestion is to work on control because what the collective, you know, when we don't know what wound to work on, just look at what's going on in the collective. And what's going on in, in, in the collective right now is the fact that we have confused care and control. And it's happening so badly in so many directions and so many ways. And, you know, that's that's what I decided to work on this eclipse window. And it was absolutely fascinating. You know, I went in being like, yeah. I'm seeing control on the collective, but I'm not really a controlling person. And of course, I'm like, come out of it being like, oh, my God. You know, one of the things that came through was just how much it was a really profound bit of guidance. Actually, the guides were like, if you are seeing it on the collective, then you're doing it to your own body. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I really do 
not let my body be free I really do push it when it's tired or don't let it do you know what I mean I really am quite controlling with with my own body and ignoring and uncaring in terms of like actually just being true to to the moment you know I really am such a a pusher through um and so use tomorrow's portal the eclipse is very very early if you're in the uk at 7 30 a.m but if you can get up if you can get up try and use use the the portal of the eclipse to be like i'm not taking this wound with me i'm giving it to the past i'm not carrying it through this new beginning i'm only taking the gifts of it with me and so tomorrow is a really really powerful day for for healing for self-healing for you know even if you just do the hop and on i even if you just do i love you i'm sorry please forgive me thank you over and over again so much healing will happen tomorrow because the, the sky is aligned for it and then the next big date is the sixth so the sixth of december is the last of the venus gates and those of you that have been following magic month will know that i've been obsessed with the venus gates this year the venus gate is when luna uh, appears when the moon appears venus appears close to the moon in the sky and there's been eight of them running since may and there's quite a kind of full circle thing of coming back to may um this this month this december um so oh maybe they were running from april but yeah venus gates have been running and they like for me i am normally somebody that's really led by the new moon and the full moon and literally the venus gates have what's happened on the venus gate that has had more of an impact on, on my month than than the new moon or the full moon they have been absolutely amazing and this one is the venus gate so so the venus gates are correlated with different chakras and this one is the one that is connected to the higher self it is the venus gate of ascension this day is all about aligning calling for your higher self asking for signs asking to be realigned asking to embody your higher self asking for ascension it is an a portal for ascension the venus gate um particularly this venus gate it's so so important the venus gates because we're moving from being emotionally centered to being life force centered that's part of what our ascension journey is and so we're moving out out of kind of creating from emotion and into creating from tantra into creating from uh sexual life force energy and the moon is emotion and venus is 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 the sexual life force energy and so these these dates are always portals and honestly when i think think back of 21 even though i've done some amazing things in 21 the thing that is by far the most significant thing i've done for myself personally including amazing travel and stuff like that when I think of 21, I think of the Venus Gates because they have been that life changing for me. And so the Venus Gate, I definitely recommend, you know, even writing a letter to your higher self, doing, making an offering to your higher self. How, if you're an offering person like me, how many offerings do you make? How many have you made to yourself? How many have you made to your higher self? And, and I believe December is all about activating the higher self. So I think this Venus gate, I feel like all of the other Venus gates have been building up to this Venus gate. And this Venus gate is, you know, a, as an amazing day to be in ceremony, an amazing. Uh, so one of the ways that your higher self communicates to you is through signs and synchronicity. So if you don't know how to connect to your higher self, just be like, higher self send me a sign let me know how i connect to you and just see what is repeated at you because one of the languages of your higher self is signs and synchronicity so if you ask for a sign you will get it from your higher self and even if you only do that but if you can do more i recommend that you do more because i feel like everything has been building up to this venus gate including the clearing you're doing out in this eclipse 
So in this eclipse window, what we're clearing is to make room for more of our higher self. I believe that from the bottom of my heart. That's why it's been so core wound. That's why it's been so the wound of the self, because it's about it's about making room for the true self because now we've got to live from that self more than ever before and then the next important date is december 11th which is uh, when venus is conjunct pluto and this is quite a huge thing astrologically um because because Venus is, so usually Venus conjuncts Pluto like for like three days, but because Venus is retrograding, the Venus conjunct Pluto is basically going on, like this is one of the significant dates, but like the journey of it is going on till March. So the last one is happening in March. So that's like a really long conjunction. <laughs> um, and you know, long things, are amazing things whenever something goes on for a long time it's really important in astrology when something goes on for a long time it's a true healing that is happening it's not a like testing the water healing it's like a real thing that is happening and when i tuned into this you know venus is love and desire pluto is death and rebirth and I believe that this is about rebirthing the way that we love. Because the way we loved in Pisces is not right anymore. You know, the way we loved in the old world, it's not right. It was right for them, but it's not right now. And I don't just mean romantic love. I mean, this is about coming out of people pleasing love coming out of controlling love coming into into care you know coming into into a different way of being into an ascended way of love one of the questions to ask on december 11th is is what do you what do i really want because, you know, again, it's that blueprint, the emotional body way of being. It used to be like, oh, I'll just be true to my feelings. I want what I feel. And we're transcending that now. And Pluto is the one that can help us transcend that. It's like, what do you actually desire? The root word of love is desire. And the root word of desire is written in the stars. And it's like one of my favorite root words. You know, this is about starting to yearn for our destiny. And therefore, release the limited ways that, the limited desires, the limited loves that, that, that are in the way of that destiny. Releasing the powerlessness in the way we love our family, ourselves, our paths, each other, the collective, the earth. And you know, this is the beginning of that, that journey that I believe will really have a huge, I think that's one of the most huge energetic combinations, one of the most huge alchemical things going on is, is Venus conjunct Pluto from December to March. That's what that season is about. It's like a rebirthing of the heart. And so tune in on December 11th. What insights are you getting? What, what's happening in the map of your life? What conversations are you, are you having? You know, you've called your higher self. Your higher self, if you call it on the 6th, it's going to be with you, making sure that you see everything you need to see and know everything you need to know. Because whatever happens on that December 11th, it's going to be your theme for the next three months. It's going to be a big part of, you know, whether you realize stuff that you need to release or whether you realize stuff that you need to receive or both. 
is going to be a big part of your journey. It's like that's the opening of that journey. So it's a beautiful time. My guides have just said intention. Set intention. Set intention. For the most sacred manifestation of love in your life. And if you do, I'm sure you'll have an amazing time with Venus and Pluto. But, you know, and I'm not saying it will be easy, but like set an intention for the love you want to live. You know, how much do we as humans come to this planet of so much possibility? And there is so much possibility here. You just have to look at all of the different options there are for life. And how much do we allow ourselves to wildly choose? And, and, you know, Venus, especially when it's working with this, like, sexually energy, it's like, well, choose wild, choose passion, <laughs> choose, choose sacred, choose Magdalena, love, you know, like, choose this. Because why not? Because the portal's open. Because the, there's an opportunity to rebirth your heart. So why not go for gold, you know? And really, there's that, that, there's, that's another theme this month, going for gold. And then, of course, this is just the day before, so, like, set intention. And then the next day is the 12-12. And 12-12 and is always about higher self, always about alignment, always about ascension it's also so important this year because it is about you know 12 12 has that kind of like masculine the one is kind of like the directness the masculine and the two is the feminine and together they're the center and actually this year has so been, we haven't seen it, I've only just seen it, but it's so been about the journey of the masculine and the feminine and about how we bring them into harmony. And so this is another ascension portal, another amazing time to connect to your higher self, amazing time to listen to activations, to be in ceremony. Um, any of these dates are amazing times to be in ceremony. You know, you should be in ceremony with its in your own personal ceremony or, or in person or a, a group event, but like be in ceremony, um, amazing time to really tune in and journey with yourself and, you know, connect to your soul purpose and, and invite that intention from the day before in. What if you rebirth your heart into your higher heart? What if you rebirth your heart into your higher self heart? Like, open expand receive there's loads on on the 12 12 there's going to be so much energy so much light so many activations it's real light workers day it's a real uh day to kind of activate your gifts to vision to dream to align to ask for upgrades and so use it because we need it at this time and so that's the 12 12 and then the, the day after, you know, everything's coming in threes <laughs> in 21. It's amazing. And so then on the 13th, um, Mars enters Sagittarius and Mercury enters Capricorn. And, you know, so for two planets, so, so, so some of you will he have heard me say this so many times, but like for me, the planets represent like our, con they pull the currents of our consciousness in the same way that the um moon pulls our emotions you know and so when two planets change two of the major planets change you can expect a big shift and to me that's like almost like the reordering after all of that intending and activating and you know mars in mars in sagittarius it's fun <laughs> like it's the warrior having a bit of fun like relaxing into a uh, power taking path action taking joy action joy is a big theme 
of of this month as well because joy is how we receive my guides have been talking about how joy is how we receive it's it, what it is is the feeling of receiving so like this is you taking your your you know path action um joyfully and and warrior action joyfully and Mercury in Capricorn. Mercury is about communication. And in Capricorn, it's about clear and, and in a way, serious communication. But how much has communication been a problem, you know, this year and last year? It's like we need this energy. And what's wonderful about this, uh, what one of the astrologers said is they were like, we, you know, this combination is we start thinking before we act. So we're in, we're not being maybe irrational or manic or these things. We're coming through care, which is the opposite of control. We're speaking clearly and we're acting passionately, but, but from that intent. And doesn't that feel like, even as I'm speaking about it, doesn't that feel just like, yes, yes that is needed after all of this chaos and all of this control it's like there's something really powerful and so you know in a way i don't really feel like you need to do anything on this day other than maybe speak your truth speak your truth if there's something that you haven't been saying it's a good day to like speak up and speak your truth but really i feel like it's just an integration day it's like a reordering day it's it's an opportunity to go ah, i feel this intention and higher self way arriving within me I feel myself being reordered and so yeah it's just like you know, whenever there's activation, and I do say this, so far, everything in, in Magic Month has been activation, 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 higher self. Whenever these things are around, there's going to be a lot of purging. There's going to be a lot of releasing. There's going to be a lot of realizing what's out of alignment and what's wrong. But enjoy it. Like, stay in it. Like, when I tune in, it's like the energy is really easy to be able to deal with that stuff because you know the higher self deals with this stuff well it's just like the higher self is is the one that comes in and is like oh gosh this room is all wrong <laughs> you know i'm gonna rearrange this room and doesn't go into overwhelm with it so call upon your higher self if that happens in december and then, um, and this might be the time around the middle of the month, because December 15 might be the time that some of that purging happens because Mars is conjunct with the South Node. So even though Mars is very, very, you know, about action and, and yeah, moving forward and positivity, we've got this kind of like, I feel like it's the final meeting of, your eclipse window journey so whatever you've been healing and working on now you might have one final karmic release of it around the middle of the month and so that time around then is a good time to do healing it's a good time to go inwards it's a good time to go to a healing in fact it's a good time to get support in healing like have a one-to-one -one or something like that because because um part of our wounds that we've been collectively working on at this time are, are about being unsupported. And sometimes the final way to do healing is to just do things differently. So as I'm speaking, I'm like, yeah, the middle of the month is about doing things differently. That's how you ultimately transcend uh, karma. And it's also about, you know, taking the lessons. How does, how does, the realignments and the healing and it and everything you have let go of how how can you find wisdom within it how can you make sure it doesn't happen again how can you live with greater integrity next time and that's really where you'll find your place of power in the healing it's like looking for integrity and claiming the gifts because obviously 
we you know the south node is is not just about karma it's also about gifts it's also about what we already know what is already innate what we already have and, and when we do the healing work those things shine those things emanate those things illuminate And then on the 18th of December, we have a really nice full moon. The last moon of the year is really, really nice. And um, it's just before solstice. And um, again, it's got a bit of that karmic theme. So you might be releasing, completing, getting insight, getting revelation. I'll just explain about karma. So my guides say that karma is... You know, it's how it's when we do something out of alignment, it's how we realign. It's the process of realignment. So again, there's that word alignment. <laughs> there's that word alignment. Um and so it's it's yeah, how we how we realign. And you know, we're at the end of a big, 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 big karmic cycle. We're at the end of you know, a seven year shadow work cycle. And this is the month, this full moon, you know, first full moon after the eclipse, it's the month that it all comes into the alignment. And there's also a sense of nostalgia, um, but it's also a really good moon to manifest on. It's, it's, it's connected to Jupiter. Um, so it's really like, you know, not just about kind of going deep and crying again. It's about like, okay, what do I want to, you know, in, in many ways, at this time, what we're trying to do is birth a new world and manifest a new earth. And one of the ways that we can do that is is by actually looking at all the things we don't want and being like, okay, well, what, what do I want then? And allowing what we want to manifest to kind of come out of all the things we're seeing that we don't want. And and so this, and then also manifest the things that we still do want, you know, <laughs> like, and that's where the nostalgia medicine comes in. So this is a really good moon to, you know, set intentions for the next cycle, to manifest for the next seven years, to manifest for the new earth, to manifest for the big picture, especially if you do healing first, because you're gonna be in the, in the process of transformation, in the process of realignment. And so it's like one of those ones, you know, it's Gemini, so both sides, you know, heal and manifest. Really powerful moon, really, you know, completion. It's integration and health, holiness as in spiritual holiness. They share the same meaning as the word integration. All of them mean about wholeness. And that's when something is truly healed, when it when it becomes part of us again, when it integrates. And, and you know, it's interesting that this moon is setting the scene for what is obviously the solstice, because <laughs> um, I feel like the solstice is all about integration. I feel like the solstice is all about really 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 important integration and then we have another really kind of interesting shift so on december uh, 19th we have two planets moving again and um, we have well venus is going retrograde and a retro you know venus retrograde um isn't as common as some of the kind of outer planet retrogrades and I always find the Venus retrograde really powerful. Like when a planet goes retrograde, it appears as if it's moving backwards in the sky from the normal direction it's moving. And that means that its themes, you know, the themes of Venus, they're about love and desire and relationship. They go inwards when it's retrograding. And, and you know, Venus retrograde, I literally went through like so much relationship drama that like started the day of Venus retrograde and ended the day it ended one year. Like it can be really magnetic because she's closer to us, um, a bit more like Mercury retrograde. And so Venus retrograde is powerful and it's obviously part of this rebirthing of the heart 
Um, and it's about emotional revelation. What I feel like in this Venus retrograde, when I tune in, is it's almost like we can't, those things that we're suppressing, those things that we're not saying, we can't not anymore. You know, it's like the true heart is the expressed heart. And <laughs> that's what it feels. So it feels like this kind of movement uh, to it. And it and it feels like with it is going to come a lot of, you know, really meeting your own self, really meeting your own your sacred desire, your own truth, your own love, and being true to yourself. That Pluto theme with Venus retrograde is like, it's, it's, we've got to be true to ourselves. That is the way. The only way is the self, you know? And don't worry about other people's selves, just yourself and um at the same day chiron goes direct this is two days before the solstice and one day after the moon and chiron is the wounded healer and chiron's so important you know to me humanity right now is the wounded healer on earth because all the animals and plants you know <laughs> i was doing a channeling with someone in japan who was like uh, it was very sweet she asked how she could help the plants and the plant uh, some of the plant kingdom came through and they were like we don't need your help you need our help <laughs> they were like we'll grow back we, we're okay humanity is what's wounded right now you need our help but heal yourself <laughs> and um you know so i believe humanity is the wounded healer and it's like Chiron really represents humanity to me. And so Chiron going direct, it brings us, you know, out of the deep wound journey that some of you are expressing, that core wound. And it's that's when those wounds can heal others. That's when those wounds become wisdom and medicine. And and in a way, it's like the, the core wound journey is going to help our, our Venus rebirthing of the heart. You know, it's really beautiful that they're happening at the same time. And it's really important. It's, again, this integration. Like, you know, the wounded healer going going forward and moving on is integrating at the same time the heart is kind of going in. True to me. How much of our healing is because... Uh, how much of what we have to heal is about us not being true to ourselves. And so, again, this is a really powerful... An important alignment and then of course 21st of December is the solstice and you know so those of you that watch magic month of October will know that like I feel like a birthing process began on the South Wayne on the 31st of October which is going to complete on the 21st of December so a lot of the processes we're in right now they come to completion um, you know, it's not degrees of a cardinal sign, Capricorn's cardinal, because the sun also enters Capricorn on the 21st of December. So there's this like tremendous amount of energy on the solstice and sense of direction, a sense of feeling like we can move mountains. Um, I think the whole year is going to make sense by the solstice, you know, and it's it's a really important ascension moment. It's a really, really important day to be in ceremony, like, because when we're in ceremony, we're in oneness, and when we're in oneness, we can receive, you know, everything that will be being showered down from from the cosmos on this, on this solstice that, you know, is always about birth. It's the like solstice. It's about it's about beginning again. It's if you're in the northern hemisphere, it's about the light getting stronger, the truth getting stronger. Um, and if you're in the southern hemisphere, it's about it's about the the dark, which is the feminine. You know, it's about the balance between the masculine and the feminine. And 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 this is what you know. This December is like right. It's got that higher self thing, like right room in order thing, you know? And so, so much sense is gonna come. 
and it's interesting because with the solstice you know every year i hold a a ceremonial journey at the winter solstice and this year it's been guided to have loads of medicines not not trippy medicines but heart medicines and starlight doesn't work with medicines that much but when we get guided to work with medicines um when we get guided to work with medicines it's an integration you know when starlight not not for all medicines but starlight it's integration and what i feel is going to happen is the whole year especially the whole year from about april time april may time the whole year is going to integrate and so it's going to become whole you know and it's going to make sense and there's going to be a becoming the becoming is what solstice brings in the process of becoming which i think then goes till march so we've been in a process of birthing and then we go into a process of becoming on that pivot point of the solstice and um, I'll just answer some of these questions and then we'll do the, uh, actually, let me finish the forecast and then I'll answer, answer your questions, but I will answer them, including your comment, Amy, about the, the low self-esteem and stuff like that. And so um, on then on the 24th, so just to highlight the hallelujahs for you that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, the south node solar eclipse is one of the hallelujahs. The second hallelujah comes after the solstice. Um, and that is the last Saturn square Uranus, which if you watch Magic Month, you're going to be like, throughout the year, the big, the thing that all of the astrologers have been speaking about all year is Saturn and Uranus. All year, Saturn and Uranus, Saturn and Uranus. This is happening on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. Um, and, you know, it has basically been the force that has been our 2021. Because Saturn is law, order, control, karma. And Uranus is chaos, revolution, freedom. And, you know, you only need to to look at 2021 to see that those two have been squaring each other and the last one is on the 24th of december and it's of course been a huge journey for us that that you know we've been tradition and and freedom have been bashing up against each other um, law and order have been bashing up against free will like it's been the journey it's been our journey and um you know this one again the word integration has come up again december is all about integration it's all about bringing it all together it's fact this one it will be the integration of you know how positive or negative it will be is dependent on how much we've integrated the first two squares how much we have learned from the first two squares and that's why i'm like you know hats off to all of you doing the work right now hats off to all of you showing up doing the doing the work because and helping people to integrate because um you know it has an impact do you see what i mean it has a huge impact basically and uh, it will have an impact into 2022 but they won't meet again um, and so we'll be influenced by it, but it won't be as kind of, you know, even in ourselves, don't you feel like you've just been flung between freedom and order, freedom and order, <laughs> you know, like, and, and we've been exploring those values and arguing those values. And, you know, it's just been the topic, hasn't it? Saturn square Uranus, it just has. But what I realized when I was tuning into this magic month is it's so relevant to the eclipse window. So in the eclipse window, I have been working on control, where I've been controlling rather than caring because that's what I've been seeing on the collective on so many levels. And 
what what the guides were saying about it is they were like when you have control you have its polarity which is out of control so what you have is control and chaos you have bust and boom what we were working on today was the fact that like when you try and control you basically create bust and boom in your life force energy so you go from like you know having too much energy to being burnt out um and what and what I realized, and this is where I just got so many shivers, was that control is the masculine, you know, it's a, it's our masculine energy, our left brain energy that wants to control, that wants to put things in order, that wants to make sense of things. That's the satin. And our feminine energy is, you know, feminine energy is chaos energy, it's creational energy, it's right brain energy, and that's the Uranus. And what this Saturn Uranus square really has been doing through the collective and personal narratives is making our masculine and feminine energies within ourselves and within the collective meet each other, face each other, meet each other with equal force so that we can find a new way. And of course, that new way is the, the the welcoming of care, which is when there is a not a bust and boom, but a balance. When the masculine and the feminine are working together and not fighting with each other. So that there is, you know, in a way it's like if you mix control and chaos, the masculine and the feminine, then you get care. And how beautiful you know, if you're going to do a manifestation or a prayer or light a candle on the 24th of December, what if we called in care? You know, I really invite this into you because it's like, I don't think we've done much. We've lived, we've lived in a very patriarchal way. We've done a lot from control and then a lot of response to that, which is chaos. And in a way, it's like the care is like, it's not the male or the female, it's the grandmother gender. <laughs> I'm working loads of guides that are these amazing rainbow grandmothers. And they're just like, you know, they, they have things in order, but there's so much freedom and respect and uh, creativity within that order. And I'm like, that's what I want to manifest from. That's the world I want to live in. So what if we all manifest care? But yeah, it's a hallelujah moment. Definitely light a candle. Definitely. Well, don't, you know, do whatever you want to do to honor it. But honor, have the hallelujah, hallelujah moment. Really powerful day to connect to the masculine and the feminine. Connect to the Magdalena Sananda energies, you know. Like, this is also obviously you know connected to Christmas which you know Sananda Magdalena we're also transcending the 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 old Christ consciousness for the new Christ consciousness you know for the one that is a perfect balance of the feminine and the masculine as opposed to a separated uh, journey between the feminine and the masculine and so um that's happening and then on the on Christmas Day uh, we get the second installment of Venus conjunct with Pluto on actual Christmas Day you know straight after that Saturn Uranus square it's like to me it's like okay so you're done I think we're all done with this feeling of being flung between chaos and control in ourselves in our lives on the collective level all the time I think we're all done with it whether you you know some of us prefer the chaos some of us prefer the control that argument is clear but the point is is that we're all done with it and what's the medicine rebirth our hearts let our hearts die and be reborn you know rebirth out of that satin uranus square But it's a quite a potent Christmas. <laughs> you know, my family like to say that 
because our family show us our shadow they're like yeah Christmas is a shadow party and I'm like it's Christmas is definitely gonna be um so but you so be mindful and try and be be the the new heart in the family you know try and be the visionary hold space for those that are maybe not awake enough to hear forecast yet to understand yet and see what happens if you come through care see if that can change the narrative that's going on in families right now it's a really really you know the whole year in a way 21 has been all about one way or another it's been all about one choice or another and and it, to integrate it it's like okay make your choices do you choose the golden age of aquaria or do you not <laughs> you know biggest choice do you choose love or do you not do you choose peace or do you not and it's like this especially at, at, at post the solstice it's like make your choices make your choices make your choices make your choices and so Christmas is a really amazing opportunity to put all of that into practice. And then on the 28th of December, we have another hallelujah. We have the best hallelujah. We have the hallelujah that is the medicine of it all, <laughs> which is Jupiter enters Pisces. And now in May, this is why I say there's this loop back around to May, because in May, Jupiter was in Pisces until I think it was like June or July time and do you notice how like a lot of things kind of sorted out around that time uh, on the collective level or at least temporarily did and then Jupiter went into Aquarius. Now Jupiter is very very happy in Pisces. Jupiter is the planet of expansion and abundance and path and it's it's comfortable in Pisces and in a way what's amazing is when Jupiter's in Pisces that Saturn effect doesn't work so much on our, our DNA like Jupiter in Pisces it's all about like wonder and manifesting big leaps it's like uh, one of the astrology things I was reading was like it's the 80s <laughs> Like, and in fact, living on a prayer was written when Jupiter moved into Pisces. Like, it's like, we can do this and everything is possible. And it's about magic, you know? It's about not doing things with logic, doing things with magic, doing things with the, the, the power of the hallelujah, doing things with the source self, doing things because you believe you can. And, and, I was amazed when I tuned in into this because the day that I tuned into this, like I had literally just been speaking about how part of the problem is we're trying to solve things with logic when I think we're meant to be solving them with magic. And that's why I actually think we've been through such core cool wound stuff and witch wound stuff and all of this stuff is it's because the death of Pisces and the birth of, of Aquarius is going to happen through magic. And here's the thing. I looked up the root word of magic. And the root word of magic is basically supernatural powers. But the Pi root of magic is to be able, which is the same root as power. Your magic is your power to to change your magic is the power of who you are the power of your essence the power of your truth your magic is your power and your power is your magic the power of your choice it's like the power of our ability to manifest to create to be like no <laughs> and it's like oh the magic is coming. Jupiter in Pisces is, is just magic and it's all about expanding your magic. It's a, in a way, you know, it's not even being that responsible. It's just like, yes, 
I can, therefore I will, you know? And like, we need that. We need that so much right now. It's, it's faith. And faith was one of the things that came out of the Venus Gates for me. Faith is literally being alive with your own divinity. And this is the way through. This is the way to all of those dreams, all that we want. We cannot fight magic with logic. We must meet it with magic, you know? And at the moment, magic is happening. <laughs> and so this is really, you know, an amazing time to manifest and just start believing in magic, believing in self, ask for faith that day. Ask to know your faith, ask to know what it is to live on a prayer. Make big path vision boards and decisions and go for it and start to manifest anyway, even if you cannot see the way. That's what Jupiter in um, Pisces is all about. And so it's yummy and it's hallelujah and it's going to be going on like right through to like May and I feel like it's going to sort out low, it's going to make those realignments that we've been feeling possible. And then on the 29th to the 30th, the end of the month, Mercury is conjunct Venus and Pluto. And this is the like, ta-da, because Mercury is the head, Venus is the heart, the head and the heart together. Live your truth. When the head and the heart together, that's the ultimate alignment. Well, the head, the heart, the hara, the belly, if they're all together, that's when you've embodied your higher self. That's when you're aligned. And so, um, again, this is a powerful, every single event this month, has a powerful opportunity to show you what you don't want, for you to heal it, for you to let it go, for you to remove it from your life. And a powerful opportunity to embody more of your higher self, more of your truth, more of your magic, and more of your power. And the month is going to end with we can no longer, you know, the head and the heart together, Mercury conjunct Venus and Pluto. It's like, yeah, we're not going to be able to, to not know what we want. We're, we're only going to know what we want. And that is going to give us and that Jupiter energy, even more fuel and even more magic and even more power and intention into uh 2022 which you know it's it's triple two it's going to be an amazing year it's going to be hard year we've got to just get used to the fact that like everything is is amplified at the moment but um this is a this is all about intention you know it's perfect timing new year's eve all of those uh, good intentions and good manifestations. They're super charged. They're super fueled. It's a really wonderful time. 29th, 30th, to vision board, to journal, to, to manifest, to listen, to listen. And so that's the forecast. It's like well exciting, don't you think? It's really special. Uh, that's our December. Um, and I will answer your questions in a moment and then we'll do a little um, uh, we'll do a little uh, channeling from the guide or a transmission. Just want to let you know what Starlight has on. So um, if you want to join us for the Venus Gate, um, I highly recommend them. The guides like download new consciousness into you and like honestly, this one's on joy. It's on learning to receive, learning to full body receive um, your higher self. And I cannot speak highly enough of the Venus Gates. They have, they have been so amazing. Every single one of them. I've quoted Venus Gates throughout this. <laughs> Probably the most profound bits of wisdom are from the Venus Gates. Like they're amazing. So the Venus Gate is happening. You can click the links to find out more. If you're in Brighton, then we have on the 1212 an evening of channeling 
and blue lotus which is a really beautiful medicine that helps you connect to your center and helps you connect to yourself a really gentle medicine um but really good for for the life force energy and and yeah coming into your center and that i feel is key this month you know when there's so much electric kind of activation energy we really need to re constantly recent that um and blue lotus is like the poet that makes you fall in love with your center. And so again, you can click the link and find out more, that's in person. And then, and I'm so excited about this, we have the winter solstice uh, journey to Avery, um, which is a ceremonial journey on the night, on the 20th, 21st and 22nd, um, which will be all about integrating the year, birthing, birthing the the new earth manifesting anybody there is going to receive so much upgrade and path code and channeled support because you're helping mother gaia in service through ceremony and you know this year it's about the rainbow way it's guided by the rainbow grandmothers that are just they're just amazing like they're just so loving and they just they just come into the room and they trip you out like they're just the most amazing magical guides and they activate your magic that's what the rainbow grandmothers do they activate your magic your magical essence and so yeah i think it's gonna be avery is always special but i feel like this year is is it's such a celebration and it's such a birth and it's such a moment of completion and integration and alignment and Avery is the heart, the womb, the mother place, like you connect so deeply to the care of the mother in Avery and it's so magic, like literally the last time we were in Avery like rainbows and shooting stars and it's just yeah it's amazing and so uh you can click the link to find out more if you want to come to that as well um do also sign up to our mailing list because i have been guided that it's for those of you that are not in the uk there's going to be some stuff to help you connect into the ascension grid um potentially are held in prayer um and stuff like that and so there there might be more coming online but those are, are one online and two in-person events and then um i'll just answer some of these uh comments and so don't feel overwhelmed you know the higher self is about not being overwhelmed it's like you don't have to do anything there's lots of things on magic month that like are suggested that sometimes I do and then sometimes I don't you know some of them I do some of them I don't do you'll do the ones you're meant to do you know if it's meant to be a month that's about healing for you you'll probably be more focused on the healing days whereas if you're going to do a month that's about manifesting you focus more on those and like these things they can be mini things like you'll know the dates that you really need to work we are not meant to work on all of the dates we just it's good to know about them because then we understand what's going on in our emotional body and you can also do like tiny things like the ceremony can be lighting a candle or setting intention or anything like that and the medicines uh for the heart so in avery we're working with mugwort blue lotus frankincense and rose um, and none of them trip you out they're not third eye medicines they're medicines that open your heart and um, i think that's the only question so how amazing is the forecast for december like it's like it's like sparkly and spicy and all sorts of wonderful things i'm gonna pull the card of the month and then I'm going to let the guides channel to see if anything. Wow. Card of the month is Mintakan, longing for home, belonging, the original light workers. And the other one is councils of the light, divine orchestration, helpers in the subtle realms. 
And so I feel like these cards are saying, ask for help and come home. Integration is about coming home, bringing it all home, bringing it out of idea. You know, one of the things that I was guided about recently, I think, I, I don't know if I said this, but um, medicine is not medicine until it's digested. You know, we have to digest 21. And I know it's, you know, it's been the most challenging and the most amazing so far. And I'm sure uh, 22 will up a gear because that's just how it is at the moment. But got to digest it at some point. You know, we've got to integrate it. We've got to become it. No, I just want to see if my guides want to offer you anything before we close. Closing your eyes. <coughs> Breathing in love. And breathing out gratitude as we the council of the light transmit to you an energetic frequency that is best described as a healing energy for freshness. And this is what we say to you about this month. Freshness is key Do not go round and round in circles. Make a new choice. Find a new way, a fresh perspective for these fresh perspectives are available to you and will become clearer and clearer as the month goes on. And you do this by first choosing to stop looking back and start looking now. Choosing to stop going round in circles. Stop controlling or chaosing in response. Choosing to center. And in the center, which is what is activating in all who choose to connect to their center in December. In the center is fresh perspective, fresh inspiration, fresh energy that will assist you in this time of great change what we can say is it is as if the higher self is downloading into the center but if you do not make space to be in your center then how can the higher self the higher perspective of yourself the potential of yourself download in and so we invite you to simply and easily take time 
to connect to your center. Take time to balance your masculine and feminine energies. And this is done as was guided at the beginning by connecting to the iron in the red blood cells. And the source in the white blood cells. Because your blood is your passion. And your center is the center of all of your passions, all of your desires. And as you connect to your center, remind yourself over and over and over that love and self are the same thing. Yourself is not separate from your love. You are your love. And what your love wants is always the way, is always. The alignment that is required in the moment. We say, make new choices. With this will activate the freshness and open up the fresh perspectives. Simply breaking your routine, doing things differently will open up more room for this integration that is embodiment of that which you call higher self. Whereas we would refer to it as your truth and your love becoming one. Your love supporting your truth and your truth supporting your love. The living of the life that is your truth. The living of the life that you love because you choose. What is right for you? We hope that this Transmission has assisted you. We remind you to ask for help. Legions of light lineage are with you, waiting for you to ask. I'm feeling the violet flame and the rainbow flame coming through you now, transmuting all energy that does not serve or belong into love and light if it is ready to be transmuted. Feeling a golden rain shower of light, taking any energy that is meant to go to the earth, to the earth. And a big beam of source light coming in taking any energy that is going to go somewhere else as an offering to the start. Sending your love and your gratitude to the councils of the light to each other 
to all minerals, all plants, all animals, all of humankind, to all of fire, all of earth, all of air, all of water, to all of love, all of light, all of matter, all of mist, to all of the beauty, all of the miracles that are happening into all of yourself. Sending you all so much love. Thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing, amazing, amazing December. I hope if any of you are called to join what we have that you do. And if you are called elsewhere, I will be in circle with you all of these amazing alignments through the ethers because we are all one so much love to you all Mwah.